Stanley Maxed. Stanley Max was born in Folkestone, Kent on the 21st of August 1895. Max emigrated to Canada after he was taken into care in 1906. That was after his parents divorced. Boarded with a prominent dentist, Max was able to win two scholarships and was a good sportsman in his school and university years. Stanley only managed one year of his forestry studies at Toronto University, but World War I was looming and he enlisted in the Canadian Expeditionary Force. In 1915, Max was assigned to Eaton's Machine Gun Battery. He was promoted to corporal before he was shipped out to England. In June 1915, he was based ironically in Folkestone. By December of that year, Stanley was promoted to lieutenant. During the war, he was wounded three times. In 1916, he was hit in the back by debris during some shelling. In July 1917, he was shot in the right thigh and was gassed. In October of the same year, he was gassed a second time during the Battle of Passchendaele. In February 1918, he was finally well enough to return to Canada for his recovery, and he was discharged from the army in 1919. After living in the US, working in a steel mill, before returning to Canada, where he worked selling lumber. He returned to the Army Reserves in the artillery in the 1920s. In 1928, he was promoted to captain, and then in 1929 to major. In the late 20s and most of the 30s, he became a singer and was performing concerts and on the radio. He moved to the UK to follow a career in commercial radio. Stanley again returned to Canada at the outbreak of the Second World War. He produced a radio show called Carry On Canada, where he encouraged enlistment and donating to the war effort. Max was then loaned to the BBC to produce and commentate on variety shows in the West End. Best known for the shows Off the Record, which was also broadcast in America. Max would have his little five minute talks about air raids and surviving of which and the Blitz broadcast. 1943, anxious to get into the action, Stanley, uh, Stanley joined the BBC's war correspondence. This required him to go out on manoeuvres and train with the troops so he could get used to his equipment. June 1944, Stanley was aboard HMS Sidmouth, where he broadcast one of the first reports of D-Day. During Market Garden, Stanley was given a seat in a glider, carrying supplies, along with other journalists. Max would send dispatches and reports about the battle daily, staying in amongst the fighting for the whole battle until he was evacuated with the rest of the paratroopers on the 25th of September. Stanley returned to Canada in November 1944, telling his story widely across the country. Stanley returned then again to England in March. He landed as part of Operation Varsity with the 6th Airborne Division. He recounted his experiences of Varsity in a Maclean's article called I Crossed the Rhine with the Glider Troop. In May 1945, Max passed through Canada on his way to the Pacific. He was one, uh, one amongst the Americans who landed in Tokyo at the end of the war. He was aboard the USS Missouri to witness the Japanese representative sign the official surrender on the 2nd of September 1945. After the war, apparently there was a card found in the Gestapo headquarters with Stanley's name on it. With all his broadcasts, one of which was particularly noted by Heinrich Himmler, who apparently disliked that broadcast. Back to Canada briefly in December of 1945 until 46, where he went back to Holland to film There's, There's is the Glory, a film about the Battle of Arnhem, uh, which, which was filmed on location and amongst all the ruined houses. Laurence Olivier gave him his break in acting, casting him in Born Yesterday, a stage production in 1947. 
Stanley starred in various films, TV, including some radio productions as well. His lung problems he got from being gassed in the First World War never really got better. And Stanley passed away in London in 1963. In obituaries posted, uh, published in Canada and Britain, he was often referred to as the primary voice of Arnhem. <laughs>